channel. I want to address this real quick, the funny part on my nose. Um, I had a Breathe Right strip on and I just took it off to film this. I have like the worst allergies right now, the worst I've ever experienced in my life. So like I could barely breathe and I keep using the Breathe Right strip. Anyways, for today, I actually have a re-upload of a shelf that I did and it's actually this shelf. I uploaded it last month. But I ended up having to re-upload the video because I was having issues with the one that was already on YouTube. So I'm not a big fan of like re-uploading a video and that's about it. So I decided to throw in two new DIYs with this video to create three Dollar Tree farmhouse DIYs that are so nice. And they totally remind me of items you can get at Kirkland's. They are all really, really pretty. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Let's see if we can get this video to 5,000 thumbs up, especially if you like farmhouse decor, because I have tried to steer clear of it a lot because people have been asking me to, and I've done a pretty good job over the course of quite a few months, but you know what? I love me some farmhouse decor, so if you do too, make sure you give the video a thumbs up, and also make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel if you're not, and click the bell button so you're notified every single time that I upload. With that being said, let's begin the video, and I saved the re-upload for last just in case you guys already saw that I saved it for the last tutorial on this okay let's start let's start with the tear tray from Dollar Tree you want to pick up one of their rolling pins and I ended up sawing mine not in half I kept one side a little longer one side a little shorter and I'm gonna be using these little wooden legs they're actually candlestick holders but they look like wooden legs to me from Hobby Lobby originally $3.99 I paid two dollars for them and um, there's four in a pack so what I ended up doing is I ended up staining all of these using a Varathane stain that I got at Home Depot in the color Dark Walnut. And I do want to say this, I did this all the way back in September uh, because I know people are going to be saying that I shouldn't be staining things because I'm pregnant. When I had stained this stuff, I wasn't even pregnant yet. It's just taken a very long time to get this video out. So now I'm going to be taking these chargers from Dollar Tree and they have this really pretty wood grain to them. But I'm going to end up painting over that using this Apple Barrel Nutmeg Brown color because I want it to match a little more the stain that I used on the wood. And like I said, this thing looks like a wood grain and there's even indents inside of it to give it that wood grain appearance. So even if you completely made this opaque with whatever paint you're using, it'll still look like a wood grain because of the indents inside of the charger. Next up, I'm going to be gluing on those little wooden legs. Now, let me tell you this. For this entire video, I used hot glue, and that's because I didn't want to use E6000 because I don't want to breathe those fumes in right now. But I recommend using E6000, Gorilla Glue, a super glue, because hot glue is not going to be able to hold this thing together. Yeah, it's going to be able to hold it for like the time being, but if you put any heavy things on it, it's going to fall over. If you try to pick it up from the middle where the rolling pin is, it'll probably snap off on you. If you have the tear tray on whatever surface it might be and you're trying to just like slide the tear tray over, there's a good chance that the legs might just come off from the bottom. So don't use hot glue. I'm telling you, don't use hot glue. <laughs> if you use hot glue, you just gotta be very, very, very careful with what you put on the tear tray and how you move around the tear tray. I'm gonna repeat this one more time. The only reason why I did it is because I don't want to be smelling any type of strong fumes right now. Only because I'm pregnant, so I'm just trying to avoid all that stuff. So that is why I used hot glue. But if I wasn't pregnant, I would have never used hot glue. I use Gorilla glue sticks, which are really good, but for something like this, it doesn't matter what kind of glue stick you used. You just want to use something better than a glue stick. So now I am attaching that rolling pin, the larger one out of the two. This one I'm going to attach to the center of my tear tray. I originally had an idea to nail that piece into the charger, and that way I could have something sturdier without using the hot glue but it started to crack the charger so that didn't work for me at all after i had that glue down i take the other charger and attach that to the top of that rolling pin and then i add the smaller piece of the rolling pin to the center of the very top charger next up i got a shower curtain holder ring from Dollar Tree and I'm actually just gluing that to the very top of that rolling pin so it just kind of looks like the way tear trays look where they have that thing at the top I don't even know what it is I don't know if it's like something that you just use to carry around the tear tray or it's just for show but I ended up gluing one down there if you can't find the black ones you can always get a white one and paint it black because usually I see white and clear ones at Dollar Tree 
I wanted to give this a wood bead look, so I'm going to be using these beaded necklaces from Dollar Tree. They come in different colors. I have these gold ones, and they're six for a dollar. I had Matt spray paint them with this Rust-Oleum khaki colored spray paint, and it was in the satin finish. There's different finishes. I just had a satin one. So after they were all dried, I went ahead and I cut pieces down because it's much easier to glue down smaller pieces than trying to glue down one long piece at once. And to glue it, I'm using hot glue. Now you could use hot glue if you used like E6000 or whatever to attach everything else. Hot glue to attach the beads is fine. If you want to use E6000 Gorilla Glue, you can also do that. And so I just attach the beads around the edge of the tear tray and then around the very sides of the tear tray. And by tear tray, I mean the chargers. There are spots where you kind of added too much hot glue and it kind of looks funny. You can always take paint and go over the hot glue so it just blends in better with the rest of your charger. So, yep, yeah, that's what I did. You can add more beads if you want. I ended up using all six necklaces. The colors that are at Dollar Tree, it's like gold, blue, pink, green, but there's not really white ones. I've seen white ones at uh, Walmart before, but they're like $2 and something cents. So, I mean, if you don't want to deal with colorful ones and you don't want to have to spray paint them, try going to Walmart. They have other colors. So, that was it. For the tear tray like i said if you use e6000 you could put heavier things on there and not really worry too much but if you use hot glue like me you can't put heavy things so when i decorated this i was very careful with the weight that i put at the top at the bottom honestly it doesn't matter the type of weight that you put there as long as whatever you're putting there isn't going to knock over the rolling pin uh, but it's at the top where you would have to be very careful because like i said i if you use hot glue, you just, you gotta be careful. But how pretty is this thing? I want to actually take it apart and then when I am no longer pregnant, I wanna use E6000 and put it all together again because I think it came out so pretty. It reminds me totally of something that you can get at Kirkland's. Now I'm gonna show you how to create these cute little palette coasters. So Dollar Tree right now has small little unfinished wood palettes. They're very small, perfect for a coaster. And I ended up staying Nemi with that Vera Thane dark walnut wood stain that I used in the beginning of the video and now I'm going to be taking these wood beads from Hobby Lobby originally $1.49 and I got them for 50% off so it cost me 75 cents so all I'm doing is I'm gluing these beads to the bottom of the palette you can use a wood glue I'm pretending actually to use hot glue right now because our power turned off when I was doing this so I was like pretending even though nothing was coming out but wood glue is totally fine it's not like there's a bunch of fumes coming from wood glue i love the way this came out so much this thing only cost me a dollar 75 cents to make because i already had the wood stain on hand if you don't have wood stain you can always go to apple barrel or not apple barrel walmart and go to the apple barrel paint section and they have it paints there for 59 cents so you can make a bunch of these for a very inexpensive price for the shelf, I am going to be using these wood plaques from Dollar Tree. Now you can either use two or three of them. Kind of depends on how you end up using the brackets to hold this. I'm going to be using two to show you how to paint them, but I, in all actuality, I use three. Also, if you cannot find these, go to a hardware store, get wood. It's the same price as getting three of these from Dollar Tree, and you'll get like a bigger piece and can make multiple shelves. Now, there's two ways you can do this. You can use wood glue to attach all of your wooden pieces together, and it's going to work perfectly fine for this. The footage you just saw, I was pretending to add wood glue. In all actuality, I used a staple gun. I got it for under $20 at Walmart. I love this thing. And the only reason I'm using the staple gun is for video purposes. I wanted to film this in one day. I didn't want to have to wait for the wood glue to completely dry. So if you don't want to use wood glue, get a staple gun. It's quick, it's easy, and it's really awesome to have. Wood glue though works just as well for something like this. I mainly added a bunch of staples to the bottom of my shelf. So the bottom of my shelf is where the wording was. And then I just added a couple to the ends on what the top of my shelf was. And you can see now it can't be bent open at all. Now I'm going to paint this to look like wood. So I'm using this Apple Barrel Nutmeg Brown paint and some paint brushes from Dollar Tree. So to give it the wood grain, you want to use your paintbrush dry. Do not wet it at all. And what you do is you dip the paintbrush into some paint and you kind of remove most of the paint from the brush. So it's almost like you're applying the brush with barely any paint. And then you just go 
up and down in a wood grain type of manner. And then you'll see that the bristles of the brush just kind of make small little lines that make it look like a wood grain. And you repeat this till you get the whole look that you like. Don't forget to paint the sides and the edges of your wood. And now I'm gonna be using a deeper brown color. It is called Coffee Bean. This one I got from Hobby Lobby, but you know what, you don't have to use this color if you don't want to. You just want a brown color that's deeper than the initial brown color that you used. And again, I take the same paintbrush, don't use a lot of paint, and go up and down with it to get the wood grain look. And you want to use different tones to make it look more like wood. Like when you use a stain, yeah, you're just using one color, but because of the natural grain that's already in wood, it the stain takes better in some areas and so it looks deeper or it looks a little bit darker. So that's what you kind of want to mimic with this. If you're using an actual piece of wood, obviously you don't have to use paint if you don't want to. You can use a wood stain and if you want to use acrylic paint, just water it down a bit and then use that to stain the wood. I used one more color of brown and this one was the darkest of all of them and I just added a few strokes of that to this and it was called Burnt Umber from Apple Barrow, if you're wondering. So just kind of use three different tones of brown. You might want to have something that's a little bit light just in case you made a mistake and some areas are just too dark, but hey. It looks really good. So the next thing I'm using is a toilet plunger and I'm taking the stick from the toilet plunger. This is actually real wood so you can stain this if you want to. So what I did is I used some watered down acrylic paint, the first color that I used on the um, little pieces of wood from Dollar Tree. And I just kind of stain it with that color. Then I took my paintbrush in the burnt umber color and added some wood grain streaks with that. I wanted to blend that stick in with the shelf because this stick is unfinished wood. So there's already wood grains that you can see in it, but I wanted to, it to blend in better with the shelf that I painted. So that's why I went ahead and created some wood grain looking strokes with my paintbrush. Okay, so. I wanted this to have hooks to hold mugs. So you're not gonna be able to find hooks at Dollar Tree other than their gigantic S hooks. So just go to a hardware store. I got this pack of four for $1.19 at Menards. But afterward I realized, oh man, these aren't gonna work. The handle on my coffee mugs are too big for these hooks. So I did have another pack that I had purchased for the same price, but it only came with two and it was bigger and that worked better. So just make sure the hooks that you buy are gonna be able to hold the handle of your mugs. So I ended up using the two bigger ones that I had and one of the smaller ones. So I take a measuring tape and I mark out where I wanna put the hooks in place. I'm gonna show you what to do if you don't have power tools. The hooks have a screw at the end of them. You take that hook and you just start twisting back and forth with the screw in the wood until you get a grip in that wood and then you just twist it in. Um, if you want more mugs to be hanging from this, you can always get a dowel, a thicker dowel, so like a round piece of wood from Walmart, a long piece for like $3 and then you can have more cups hanging. I'm showing you this with Dollar Tree products, but there are so many options out there for like the same price you're going to pay for something at Dollar Tree um, at other stores. So just don't think that Dollar Tree is the be all end all of like great prices. Anyways, so yeah, you just take it, go back and forth until you get some kind of grip. There was a point where I was having a hard time twisting the rest in. I was just wasn't strong enough. So Matt told me what you do is you just get a screwdriver or like a pen or something, kind of hook it around your hook and then use that to twist the hooks into place and then you don't hurt your hand that way. And it worked, it, uh, I was able to twist it. He kind of got it in for me and then I just finished it all up and it was way easier. <laughs> Um, toward the end than just using my hand. Initially, my hand was fine doing it, but then like I said, I just wasn't strong enough to get the rest of it completely in. If you have power tools, of course, drill a hole and then just put the screw through, twist it around. Now to hang all this on the wall, I'm gonna be using these metal brackets from Dollar Tree. Now there are only two holes in the bracket to nail this to the wall. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna have to close off the bottom of this bracket where there's kind of like another little hook and you close it off so that the rod can sit inside of there without falling out on you. 
and you have to nail this one to the wall. You cannot use command strips and put heavy mugs on there and not expect it to fall down. If you're not putting anything heavy, you can use command strips. So I just put my brackets on the wall with some nails. I add the shelves and then the rod and then I just decorated and add my mugs. Now I made a shelf before like I said and that was hanging up using command strips that had lightweight mugs on it. The Raydon mugs I'm using in this shelf are much heavier than the ones I had hanging off of the other shelf and I had lightweight stuff on that shelf that I made previously. So be aware of the weight. If you're going to be using anything heavy you do not want to put those brackets up using command strips. But if you're gonna have something like a wreath, a very lightweight mug, a couple of them, um, a very lightweight tin with some flowers, it's okay to use command strips. But if you're gonna be, again, using something heavy, especially a rod with multiple mugs on it, you need to nail the brackets to the wall. That's it for this Dollar Tree shelf. I only used six products from Dollar Tree and if you add the hooks that I used or in the paint, it still comes under $10. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Last year I think I did really well bringing new items that I haven't seen done before using Dollar Tree products that are much bigger and like furniture pieces take up more space in just a tiny little picture so if you guys enjoy these type of tutorials please make sure you give it a thumbs up thank you so much for watching i will see you guys next time take care bye